Amitabha Ghosh, who's the chairman of the Science Operations Working Group of the NASA Mars Exploration Rover Mission. Another exciting day for space exploration. Talk to us about what we saw and what's happened in this launch. So this is an incredible time. So let me tell you, some of it is apparent and some not. This is very different from Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos' mission. That just went to 50 to 60 miles. This is going to go to 575 kilometers, higher than the International Space Station. So you can say, after 50 years, um, human beings have gone the highest possible. So at, in 1972, man went to the moon, and then we've been pretty much stuck on Earth and in the International Space Station. This is the first mission which is going above that. The other interesting thing is um, that you know, this is just not a mission that we are watching. We are trying to watch the birth of a new industry. And it may fail, but it may also succeed. So if you think of early aviation, um, you know, people going from um, one continent to another, flying in a few hours, it was dangerous. People did not really want to go there. Um, there was not a business model. So initial... Um, the investors, initial investors in airline companies were like people like, well-heeled people like Henry Ford. They sold and got out of the business. And um, something as trivial as the United States Postal Service, they came in and so, so the planes used to uh, fly packages. Mm -hmm. And so here there will be a dif difficulty in finding a business model. But if you look at it, you know, Maybe this costs half a million dollars per person. That was the number for Bezos' flight. If you can somehow in that cabin, and I'm just for anecdote telling you, um, put 100 people. So the cost becomes one by 100 of that. It becomes $5,000. And $5,000 is the um, price of a business class ticket between Turkey and Washington. So this is what they are heading at. You, you have to work on reliability. You have to work on customer preference. Why would you want to go to space? Um, so that has to be worked out. But here we are in a very interesting trajectory. Um, you know, civilians means like, right. you know, just as you go for a holiday, right? <laughs> you work the whole week, you pack your bags, and the next day you're on a flight. You don't do any special trainings like astronauts. These people are doing the same thing, right? Huh. So it's a it's a birth of a new industry that you are observing. It may right. fail, it may work out. Yeah, it certainly is. And I, I did want to ask you about that because these uh, four people who are on board, none of them are astronauts. I mean, how is it even possible? Because, of course, whenever we think of um, going into space, we think of NASA or other uh, um, space agencies and people who are highly trained scientists. Right. So this is all possible. It ha happens in flight. When you take an airplane, you're flying at 35,000 feet. The air temperature outside is very cold, minus 20 maybe, minus 20 degrees centigrade. Um, the pressure is incredibly low. But you are not doing any training. There is some sort of a flight uh, instruction video in the beginning, and most of us don't really listen to it. It has become so regular. And so here, um, if, if this goes right, they will have protocols in place that ordinary um, uh, non the ordinary the civilians, non NASA stage. personnel, without and any training, we have can do, go to space um, just as they would fly from one country to another. But they did have some kind of prep work, didn't they? Didn't they? I mean, it's my understanding that they took a zero G flight to prepare themselves for uh, being weightless. What what kind of preparation would they have gone through? <clears throat> so of course you need to go through extensive physical. You know, there's a lot of G there, three G and more. Um, so you have to be in generally good shape, um, but um, you need to be somewhat adapted to zero G. That's why, why they did the zero G flight. But it is nothing that can that cannot be attained in a very short time, particularly if you're interested. Say if you were going to uh, hike to the base of Mount Everest, you would probably spend some time walking and exercising for a few weeks. But that is doable, and that's what humans do. A lot of people do do these things. And so, um, although there is, there will be some preparation, but it is, the fascination of space is so strong among all human beings across nationalities and uh, ages that um, this might just work.
Yeah, it, it certainly, it still fascinates people, even though we've been uh, going into space for um, well over 50 years now. Uh, so uh, these, uh, the crew members will be in space for, in orbit for three days. What's the plan for when they're there? Will be they doing tests or is this just uh, a tourist uh, thing? See, I think it's a mixture of both. And here, again, I, I should point out the difference between the uh, Blue Origins and the Richard Branson missions. They were in space for a few minutes. This is three whole days. So they will keep on going around the Earth without actually going to the International Space Station. Um, they will do some science experiments. But I think it's a mixture of both. They will do both um, uh, uh, some science experiments, and they probably take in the experience of the flight. All right. Thank you so much. And again, it uh, looks like the uh, crew of the SpaceX uh, Falcon 9 rocket have successfully reached orbit above Earth. Uh, really another exciting time for space travel. Amitabha Ghosh joining us from Washington. Thank you. Thank you.